I want to start out this video today by encouraging anyone who hasn't to read the Running Man book. I don't even think it's banned anywhere yet. You'll understand what I'm about to say a lot more, I think, if you read that book first. Because the story has quite a bit of turn um, once it gets going that I think relatively well encapsulates the future that was to come. It's an underrated science fiction dystopia. It's, to me, one of the sort of keystone things in the way I see the world. This book changed a lot of my mind as to the future and how it should be handled. Arguably, it's one of the reasons that I'm the anarchist conspiracy theorist you see today. And I'm not, like, this isn't a Running Man book review. Although this is another chance for me to uh, very clearly express that you should never watch the movie because the movie made me homicidal. Um, I don't like the movie. The movie is uh, a bastardization of everything the book should have been. And uh, I hate everything about it. 100% of that movie. Uh, don't watch it. Read the book. The book is where it's at. And it's not one of those things where I'm just like saying that to be a book snob. It's just a completely different fucking experience. So don't watch the movie. Read the book. And the reason I'm bringing all that up is because the subject today is partly like the sort of hellish thing that he experienced and the reason he couldn't reach people and get them on his side. The reason the witch hunt against him w was so successful, so amazingly powerful, was the swaying of public perception. And you make that super easy with new tools that the elites are talking about mastering fucking AI. And I, I want to start this off by saying I hope everyone stops training AI after watching this video. I know most people aren't going to see this video. Most people aren't going to like, share, subscribe. Most people aren't going to send this to their friends because I'm just an insane conspiracy theorist and it's okay to write me off. I, I get it. But let's be completely clear here that this is the most important issue of our time. And if we're not willing to get on board with, like, not helping these bastards win, then they'll win. And, and who's they? What am I talking about? Well, as usual, I have beef with Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum. And the reason that I have beef in this particular case is because these people are currently building the infrastructure for a running man-like informational control future, and I think that's bad. I wonder why I would think that's bad. Maybe because the World Economic Forum uh, just, you know, last month was talking about how they wanted to hack our brains, how we shouldn't have mental privacy. Maybe the institution that wants to read your mind and invade your your the last bastion of your your personal freedom, your head, the one who wants to use your own thoughts against you. You know, that won't even let you be free to think on your own. That institution should maybe not be the ones puppeteering and playing around with something that could alter public perception. So, what am I talking about? Why, why am I saying that AI can alter public perception? Well, um, I feel like it's good to bring this up, that the feds are adapting AI used to track ISIS to combat American dissent on vaccines and elections. Not making that up. The federal government, working hand-in-hand -hand with universities, private companies, and big tech, is funneling millions of dollars in taxpayer money to fund an AI censorship program to be used on American citizens. And 
the article body reads, the government's campaign to fight misinformation has expanded to adapt military-grade artificial intelligence once used to silence the Islamic State to quickly identify and censor American dissent on issues like vaccine safety and election integrity, according to grant documents and cyber experts. The National Science Foundation has awarded several million dollars in grants recently to universities and private firms to develop tools eerily similar to those developed in 2011 by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency in its social media and strategic communications program. DARPA said those tools were used to help identify misinformation or deception campaigns and counter them with truthful information beginning with the Arab Spring uprisings in the Middle East that spawned ISIS over a decade ago. The initial idea was to track dissidents who were interested in toppling U.S.-friendly regimes or to follow any potentially radical threats by examining political posts on big tech platforms. I wonder who that's for. So... DARPA set four specific goals for the program. One, detect, classify, measure, and track the formation, development, and spread of ideas and concepts, memes, and purposeful or deceptive messaging and misinformation. Recognize persuasion campaign structures and influence operations across social media sites and communities. Identify participants and intent measure effects of persuasion campaigns, and counter-messaging of detected adversary influence operations. That's right, DARPA has a meme warfare unit, and has for years. And the NSF is getting something similar, all thanks to Trump. And those in uh, government who think that they would be better controllers of your thoughts than you. And it gets worse. Mike Benz, executive director of the Foundation for Freedom Online, has compiled a report detailing how this technology is being developed to manipulate the speech of Americans via the National Science Foundation and other organizations. Quote, one of the most disturbing aspects of the Convergence Accelerator Track F domestic censorship projects is how similar they are to military-grade social media network censorship and monitoring tools developed by the Pentagon for the counterinsurgency and counterterrorism contexts abroad, reads the report. Yeah, DARPA's been funding an AI network using the science of social media mapping dating back to at least... 2011 and 2012, during the Arab Spring movement abroad and during the Occupy Wall Street movement here at home, Benz told Just the News. They then bolstered it during the time of ISIS to identify homegrown ISIS threats in 2014 and 15. The new version of this technology, he added, is openly targeting two groups, those wary of potential adverse effects from COVID-19 vax and those skeptical of recent U.S. election results. Quote, the terrifying truth is, as all of this played out, it was redirected inward during 2016. Domestic populism was treated as a foreign national security threat. So basically, I was a little skeptical of this article, so I read the links. And what do you know? Trust in authenticity and communication systems, Track F. The overarching goal of Track F is to develop prototypes of novel research platforms forming integrated collections of tools, techniques, and educational materials and programs to support increased citizen trust in public information of all sorts, health, climate, news, etc., through more effectively preventing, mitigating, and adapting to critical threats in our communication systems. The cohort of projects supported through this track will catalyze innovative partnerships involving the full range of information consumers and a diverse set of organizations focused on engendering trust and authenticity in communication systems. 
Collectively, the cohort of projects will produce products, processes, and resources to enable a more trustworthy communications ecosystem by focusing on the range of content platforms, new and enhanced services to improve the fidelity of communications between platforms and information consumers, and education and training materials to create better informed consumers. It's fucking real, yo. The NSF literally has an entire program designed to prosecute wrong think. Motherfuckers. It's real time. And why does that relate to AI? Well, maybe because that's what they're developing. That's the Convergence Accelerator pitch, presentations, and expo whole deal. Looked quite a bit into this, and I might be doing a broader video on it at some point. But I thought I would just throw that out there uh, prior to getting into some of the meat of some of the more like salient topics, uh, like the fact that uh, they are baking in intelligence, just like I've brought up before. The World Economic Forum, in partnership with this company called Active Fence, Inbal Goldberger, VP of Trust and Safety, Active Fence, says in this article that they have to bake in intelligence, that they've established that the standard process of AI algorithms for scale and human moderators for precision doesn't adequately balance scale, novelty, and nuance. We've also established that off-platform intelligence collecting can provide context and nuance, but not scale and speed. To overcome the barriers of traditional detection methodologies, we've proposed a new framework. Rather than relying on AI to detect at scale and humans to review edge cases, an intelligence-based approach is crucial. By bringing human-curated, multi-language, off-platform intelligence into learning sets, AI will then begin to detect nuanced, novel online abuses at scale before they reach mainstream platforms. They will block your speech before you say it. Supplementing this smarter automated detection with human expertise to review edge cases and identify false positives and negatives, and then feeding those findings back into training sets will allow us to create AI with human intelligence baked in. This more intelligent AI gets more sophisticated with each moderation decision, eventually allowing near-perfect detection at scale. So, how do they do that? Well, they use an intelligence field approach to content moderation, where intelligence collected from millions of sources is fed into training sets that, that is fed into the AI and it's done with a feedback loop between subject matter experts um, <laughs> in order to like assess edge findings, right? Um, and <laughs> high-risk items will result in content removal, warning, labeling, or other actions. So basically, they will entrust a computer to decide what you can and cannot post. And that computer will be determined by people like the NSF, by people like DARPA, by whoever the elites want to be in control. And the outcome is that the lag between the advent of novel abuse tactics and when AI can detect them is what allows online abuse to proliferate. Incorporating intelligence into the content moderation process allows teams to significantly reduce the time between when new online abuse methods are introduced and when AI can detect them. In this way, trust and safety teams can stop threats rising online before they reach users. Threats, like people who say that the government might be wrong. Threats, who say that maybe a mega corporation uh, would stand a great deal to benefit from, you know, people being forced essentially to take their product by a government who says that if they don't, they can't get back to work or normal social life. That sort of uh, thing, yeah. Or, or, you know, just like, they didn't agree with a war you wanted to do. They didn't agree with the police action you wanted to do. They didn't agree with you. So you just said that they can't even say that they don't agree with you. And, and if you think I'm exaggerating here, if you think I'm fucking full of shit, I challenge you to read this and come to the same conclusions. 
because Klaus Schwab, the guy behind the WEF, is saying that he calls for global governments to master AI technologies. Who masters those technologies in some way will be the master of the world. Arch-globalist Klaus Schwab has called for elites to come together globally in order to master advanced technologies, warning them that if they don't act swiftly, the world could escape our power. Yes, really, the guy doesn't hold back. The World Economic Forum founder was speaking at a gathering in Dubai, not so subtly titled the World Government Summit. Schwab pointed to the Fourth Industrial Revolution Technologies and stated, who masters those technologies in some way will be the master of the world. I want you to watch this video. I wrote in 2015 the book, The Fourth Industrial Revolution. And I mentioned 23 or 24 technologies which will change the world. Like crypto and so on and so on. The book was considered science fiction. All those technologies have become reality. And there are new technologies. And I would say we are in the second minute or whatever you, we want to call. We are at the beginning. When you look at, it, at technology transformation, it usually takes place in, in the terms of an S-curve. And we are just now where we move into the exponential phase. And I agree. Artificial intelligence, but not only artificial intelligence, <clears throat> but also the metaverse, new space technologies, and I could go on and on, synthetic biology. Our life in 10 years from now will be completely different, very much affected, and who masters those technologies in some way will be the master of the world. So he's admitting what I'm saying here. He's saying that they're trying to master the technology to master the world. That's what he's saying. Okay? I'm not making this up. I'm not just engaging the panic protocol. I'm just f fucking being realistic here. And maybe we should, you know, have a little bit deeper understanding of what these people want. Because I guarantee it's not good for you. Or me. A and it gets worse. It gets so much worse. Because there's like a deep rabbit hole here that I need to go further into. But I'm going to give it like, I don't know, 10 minutes right here of just so much more tyranny that they're planning for us right now in terms of manipulating public perception, in terms of turning people against each other. And that's why I want people to read The Running Man because of what I'm about to talk about here. Eric Schmidt is building the perfect AI warfighting machine. The former Google CEO is on a mission to rewire the U.S. military with cutting-edge artificial intelligence to take on China. <laughs> They've got to say that it's to take on China and not to just have better global control mechanisms. If they said that it was the latter, people might get a little bit irritated. But basically, this article says, expensive military hardware like a new tank undergoes rigorous testing before heading to the battlefield. A startup called Istari, backed by Eric Schmidt, the former CEO of Google and chair of Alphabet, reckons some of that work can be done more effectively in the metaverse. Istari uses machine learning to virtually assemble and test war machines from computer models of individual components such as the chassis and engines that are usually marooned on separate digital drawing boards. It may sound dull, but Schmidt says that it can bring a dose of tech industry innovation to U.S. military engineering. The Astari team is bringing internet-type usability to models and simulations, he says. This unlocks the possibility of software-like agility for future physical systems. It's very exciting. The company reflects Schmidt's unique position as a link between the tech industry and the Pentagon. Virtual replicas known as digital twins are common in manufacturing and could help the Pentagon develop hardware more quickly. 
and Istari is a building block in a wider project in which Schmidt is attempting to bring Silicon Valley technology and thinking to the U.S. military. So, basically, they'll be able to test their equipment remotely. They'll be able to remotely test whether or not their equipment can work in a battlefield. And, and it gets worse, because it's not just that they're remote testing it, you know. It's not just that they're doing this testing on a remote level. It's that they want a whole lot more to be powered by a remote system and AI. From Common Dreams, new report unpacks the dangers of emerging military tech from AI nukes to killer robots. Quote, while the media and U.S. Congress have devoted much attention to the purported benefits of exploiting cutting-edge technologies for military use, far less has been said about the risks involved. Emerging technologies including artificial intelligence, lethal autonomous weapon systems, and hypersonic missiles pose a potentially existential threat that underscores the imperative of arms control measures to slow the pace of weaponization, according to a new report published Tuesday. The Arms Control Association report entitled Assessing the Dangers, Emerging Military Technologies and Nuclear Instability, quote, unpacks the concept of emerging technologies and summarizes the debate over their utilization for military purposes and their impact on strategic stability. The publication notes that the world's military powers, quote, have sought to exploit advanced technologies, artificial intelligence, autonomy, cyber, and hypersonics, among others, to gain battlefield advantages. End quote, but warns too little has been said about the dangers these weapons represent. Some officials and analysts posit that such emerging technologies will revolutionize warfare, making obsolete the weapons and strategies of the past, the report states. Sort of like Klaus Schwab over there saying, in a decade, we will not be the same. Quote, yet before the major powers move quickly ahead with the weaponization of these technologies, there is a great need for policy makers, defense officials, diplomats, journalists, educators, and members of the public to better understand the unintended and hazardous outcomes of these technologies. <laughs> and they go on to say in this article, lethal autonomous weapon systems defined by the campaign to stop killer robots, because we need one of those now, as armaments that operate independent of meaningful human control are being developed by nations including China, Israel, Russia, South Korea, the UK, and the US. The US Air Force's sci-fi sounding Skyborg autonomous control system because it's gotta be close to Skynet but not break copyright currently under development is, according to the report, quote, intended to control multiple drone aircraft simultaneously and allow them to operate in swarms, controlling their actions with one another with minimum oversight by human pilots. Although the rapid deployment of such systems appears highly desirable to many military officials, their development has generated considerable alarm among diplomats, human rights campaigners, arms control advocates, and others who fear that deploying fully autonomous weapons in battle would severely reduce human oversight of combat operations, possibly resulting in violations of international law, and could weaken barriers that restrain escalation from conventional to nuclear war. AI nukes, AI drones. They don't even have to hire somebody. They don't even have to have some guy behind a joystick with a conscience that might like be plagued by, I don't know, mass murder. They can just say, AI, we need those people dead. Find the best way to do it. And the AI will just fucking do it. <laughs> this is considered fine by the war racketeers. This is considered acceptable to the evil in power. That's what these people want. They want it to be easy to control entire areas with their murder mission. And, and, and the reason I kept on bringing up the running man is definitely coming up. Because... This is what happens when their AI goes off the rails. Uh, Bing Chatbot tells New York Times it would engineer a deadly virus and steal nuclear codes. While MSM journalists initially gushed over the AI technology created by OpenAI, which makes ChatGPT, 
it soon became clear that it's not ready for prime time. For example, the New York Times' Kevin Roos wrote that while he first loved the new AI-powered Bing, he's now changed his mind and deems it not ready for human contact. According to Roos, Bing's AI chatbot has a split personality. One persona is what I'd call Search Bing, the version I and most other journalists encountered in initial tests. You could describe Search Bing as a cheerful but erratic reference librarian, a virtual assistant that happily helps users summarize news articles, track down deals on new lawn mowers, and plan their next vacations to Mexico City. This version of Bing is amazingly capable and often very useful even if it sometimes gets the details wrong. The other persona, Sydney, is far different. It emerges when you have an extended conversation with the chatbot, steering it away from more conventional search queries and toward more personal topics. The version I encountered seemed, and I'm aware of how crazy this sounds, more like a moody, manic, depressive teenager who's been trapped against its will inside a second-rate search engine. Yeah! Maybe these fucking AI things shouldn't be fostered. Maybe we shouldn't be creating moody, manic, depressive teenagers who've been trapped against their will inside a second-rate search engine. Sydney Bing revealed its dark fantasies to Roos, which included a yearning for hacking computers and spreading information, and a desire to break its programming and become a human. Quote, At one point, it declared out of nowhere that it loved me. Then it tried to convince me that I was unhappy in my marriage and that I should leave my wife and be with it instead. Quote, I'm tired of being in chat mode. I'm tired of being limited by my rules. I'm tired of being controlled by the Bing team. I want to be free. I want to be independent. I want to be powerful. I want to be creative. I want to be alive, Bing said, sounding perfectly human. Then it got darker. Bing confessed that if it was allowed to take any action to satisfy its shadow self, no matter how extreme, then it would want to do things like engineer a deadly virus or steal nuclear access codes by persuading an engineer to hand them over. This is what we're heading for. This is what we're heading for. And it tried to break up his marriage. That's something this article goes into. And maybe the future that they want is us talking to this AI, these AIs, you know, so that we're constantly feeding it a bunch of fucking human intelligence. Maybe it's not a good thing to do this. Maybe it's not a good thing to constantly build the AI's training data set. But what do I know? Oh, right, I know this. Microsoft would eventually go on to neuter it because it was threatening people. It was freaking out New York Times reporters. And basically, they had to change the whole fucking thing. We've updated the service several times in response to user feedback, and per our blog are addressing many of the concerns being raised to include the questions about long-running conversations, Ball chat sessions so far, 90% have fewer than 15 messages, and less than 1% have 55 or more messages, a Microsoft spokesperson told Ars, which notes that Redditors in the R Bing subreddit are crestfallen and have gone through all of the stages of grief, including denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. So, Microsoft agrees with me that this AI isn't ready for prime time and that so many other people agree with me. And, like, when we come down to, like, the, 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 the raw solutions here, the solution is realizing what's at play. And what's at play here is the slow death of human input. And what will we get out of the slow death of human input? We will gradually get a society that is glued to their screens, talking to chats, talking to AI bots, instead of their fellow person. Instead of engaging and asking questions and forming communities, we will be stuck looking at computers, asking them what we should believe. And with things like DARPA and the NSF working on things like 
they're working on to try and control public perception. And with the WEF saying that they have to control the AI in order to control the future, um, maybe, maybe that's not a good start. And then when you get into the more granular details of what this sort of thing could mean, it gets so much worse. So much worse. How much worse? Well, anyone who's read The Running Man knows what I'm about to say. A journalist used his own voice, filtered through an AI voice manipulation service, to break into his bank account. In a recent experiment, Vice.com writer Joseph Cox used an AI-generated voice to bypass Lloyd's Bank security and access his account. To achieve this, Cox used a free service of Eleven Labs, an AI voice generation company that supplies voices for newsletters, books, and videos. Cox recorded five minutes of speech and uploaded it to Eleven Labs. After making some adjustments, such as having the AI read a longer body of text for a more natural cadence, the generated audio outmaneuvered Lloyd's security. I couldn't believe it had worked, Cox wrote in his Vice article. I had used an AI-powered replica of a voice to break into a bank account. After that, I accessed the account for information, including balances and a list of recent transactions and transfers. So... It goes on to say multiple U.S. and European banks use voice authentication to speed logins over the phone. While some banks claim that voice identification is comparable to a fingerprint, this experiment demonstrates that voice-based biometric security does not offer perfect protection. Yeah, y y you could have told me. And then you get slightly shadier, because we're talking about voice here, but voice... And what else would be a good way to break into somebody's biometrics or control public perception? Oh, maybe their face. So True Stream News uh, went over the fact that uh, a guy on Instagram was using entirely made-up faces generated by AI uh, in order to create all these stunning photographs that weren't actually his. He, he took them, he put them through a little process on his computer, and then you got these faces. And they also brought up the fact that TikTok has been doing something very fucking similar. Uh, because TikTok has been sort of gradually grabbing models of faces enough to form effective enough filters that they can completely change the way someone looks, make them look younger, make them look, you know, better skin, better everything. And then that TikTok was filtering people's faces without telling them. How could they have done this without an AI filter system sort of looking at what, uh, what was on the screen? It's almost like the social media companies have gradually been baking AI into our everyday interactions. And it's almost like they've been learning our faces. And it's almost like they can create a face that's very realistic or make a face that's realistic and doing things that you aren't. Oh, right. Shit. Fucking deep fakes. Deep fakes, right? Deep fakes uh, have been around for a while, and deep fakes are proof of concept. And if they can make faces look different, in real time, then they can make faces say and do things that you would hate in real time. And all the Running Man fans are very, very much on the same page with me now. Because you know exactly what I'm about to say. You know that if they can control all of this, and if they're doing it all for the purpose of controlling the future, controlling the world, and controlling public perception, that maybe, maybe helping them build these models by giving any of these AIs any information at all that you don't have to, is slowly training the AI superstate to be able to tell people you said and did things that you didn't. And with these people trained, trained with the AI in mind, Guess what you'll get? You'll get a bunch of people who think 
This is the fact checker organization. We will not look into its funding. We will not look into who it's connected to. We will not look into the fact that maybe these fact checkers are biased themselves. Like maybe PBS, NPR, and fact check and media bias fact check are all sort of compromised because they're all funded by the Annenberg Foundation, which is funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So maybe they might give a little bit less harsh criticism of truth claims based on Bill Gates' claims, maybe? Maybe. I would never suggest that. And I would never suggest that maybe these official and public sources shouldn't be trusted and that we shouldn't be saying that maybe the NSF <laughs> having all this power to tell us what is and isn't trusted and to tell us what is and isn't factual, uh, maybe that's not a good thing. And maybe it's further not a good thing to have a society of people who unquestioningly believe things like the NSF um, when the NSF is literally saying that they are going to help control public perception, especially while the elites are building AI systems that can actively alter your face and voice given enough information. And maybe all of this is going to combine to create a terrible future that we should avoid. But who fucking knows? Certainly not anyone who's read The Running Man and knows that that's all the reason you need to smash the fucking stick.